Good morning and our lesson for today is about the relationship of teachers and students and although this is a very complex topic of law but today we will be focusing only on the news the provisions of the new civil code and the family code and I hope those who are teachers and students or those who are parents who have students um, like their kids are going to school could relate and could learn to this now we start uh, since the lesson is is composed of two parts today's lesson will tackle or the part of the lesson will, uh, for today will only tackle the provisions of the new civil code and the family code and for the second part we will be tackling the cases that involved teachers and students decided by the Supreme Court. Now, under the new civil code, Article 349, teachers and professors are considered to have substitute parental authority. Now, we have to take note that the new civil code is an old law, and we have a newer law, the family code, but we will, uh, you will learn something very crucial in a while. Now, under the same code, the New Civil Code, it provides that in Article 352, that the relationship between the teacher and pupil, professor and student, are fixed by government regulations and those of each school or institution. So, there are two authorities setting forth the relationship between students and teachers. And the same code also, if uh, you happen to meet this word, corporal punishment. So this um, provision prohibits the imposition of corporal punishment. If I may read, in no case shall corporal punishment be continence. The teacher or professor shall cultivate the best potentialities of the heart and mind of the pupil and students. So this is a very general statement though. Now we go to damages. Actually, four times the word teacher is mentioned in, in the new civil code. And this is the fourth one and this is very, very important on damages. And for those law students or bar reviewees um, taking up or having the review now, you have to take note of this because this could be um, applied in your torts, or dam uh, torts and damages case. Sorry for the noise. <laughs> That's um, the dog from our neighbor. Sorry. Now, again, we go back. Um, Article 2180 of the New Civil Code establishes the or lays down the liability of teachers or heads of establishments of arts and trades. It says that they shall be liable for damages caused by their pupils and students or apprentices. The word apprentices applies to establishments of arts and trades so long as they remain in custody. So there's an element. So they should be, the student or apprentices, should be under or in the custody of teachers or heads of establishments of arts and trades. Now, the responsibility treated in this article shall cease when the person the teacher or heads of establishments of arts and trades could establish that they observed all the diligence of a good father to prevent damage so the same article provides the defense for teachers now we go to the newer law the family code it is very um, it's something complex or questionable also because again in the new civil code what is mentioned is substitute parental authority however under article 218 of the family code it says that the school its administrators and teachers or the individual entity or institution engage in child uh, in child care shall have special parental authority and responsibility over the minor child while under their custody instruction or custody so you should know the element that under their supervision, instruction, or custody, 
for the special parental authority to be applied and responsibility too. So, and you also have to remember that authority and responsibility shall apply to all authorized activities, whether outside or inside the premises of the school, entity, or institution. One good example would be during field trips or like conferences like um, for um, journalism students or journalism um, activities. Um, the national or regional press conference. During these extracurricular activities, uh, the students are still under the authority and responsibility of the teacher and the school. Now, in the same family code, Article 219, it provides that those given the authority and responsibility under the preceding article, which is 218, that establishes special authority to teachers and um, uh, school administrators, it says that they shall be principally and solidarily liable for damages caused by the acts or omissions of the unemancipated minor, meaning those below 18 years old. The parents, judicial guardians, or the persons exercising such substitute parental authority over the said minor shall be subsidiarily liable. So, there are two kinds of liability here, principal and solidary liability, and the second would be subsidiary liability. Now, in the next part of the lesson, you will know several uh, two cases, actually, that applied um, these principles found in, our, uh, in the new family code and or the new civil code that um, specializes on substitute and parental authority and also the principal and solidary liability of teachers towards the acts or in relation to acts and missions done by the students. We have to remember that these students must be unemancipated minor or considered child under the law. Thank you so much and please look forward to our next part of the lesson and you will learn more. Don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel so that you can have a more an, an easy an easier um, navigation in our channel. Thank you so much and have a happy week ahead.